When I look at the Block 9 building, I see a lot of concrete. There's a lot of concrete up there. And uh, our next guest, Brent Williams, is the concrete superintendent. You're the concrete boss. Good morning. You're the big concrete man. Yep. That's a title. Do you have that on the business card, like concrete superintendent? We had those out once in a while. Do you? That's pretty cool. Wow. You can open many doors with that kind of business card, I'm thinking. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. So what exactly does the concrete superintendent do? So the concrete's just part of the building, structure of the backbone, so it's pretty much to organize the concrete end of it, the rebar, um, deliveries, uh, form work, and then, of course, the crew themselves. So really it's just building the backbone of the building. And uh, how much concrete is in this building? Uh, exactly. I'd, I'd have to look, but uh, each floor it's 300 and some on each level, the smaller levels, and then it's 100 for the walls and 20, 25 for the columns. So. And those are numbers in cubic yards? Yep. Right, so just do the math, and it'll get you over 14,000. Yeah, there's uh, with sidewalks and everything that goes around it, there's a lot of concrete here. So, And uh, so you got a 19-story building here, right? Yep. Uh, 230 feet, 30, 235 feet high. Um. I'm a radio guy. I'm not a concrete guy. So you have to put this into like, you know, for a third grader. How, how do you stack that? How do you, you know, how do you, you know, where do you start and how do you build on it? Is it floor by floor? Yep. So the floor uh, before has to be done before you go on to the next. So uh, all the shoring and the formwork stands on the floor that we just poured. So the larger floors we were turning in two weeks. Uh, and then the upper floors we got down to a floor every eight days. So stacking it. And just build the next one. A floor every eight days. It, yep. We were going uh, seven days a week up until August, and then we got on schedule on track and uh, took se- uh, Sundays off. So. Wow. And how big a crew uh, do you have doing the concrete? We're at 30 now, and I think we're up as much as 85 with our trades. When you're in the middle of it. Yep. And um, are these people from around here? Do they... They come in from McGough's crews and other places. What? What? Uh, where do they come from? Yeah, I think we were probably at 70, 30, 70 travelers, thirty locals. Um, but yeah, they're all tradesmen, so we had good guys. And you need that building something, stacking anything two hundred and thirty feet tall is tough. But the guys did it. So, what's the most challenging part of that? <laughs> I think Mother Nature has a house here in North Dakota. Is that right? Yeah. I think she lives close by because that was the biggest. We had wind, snow, I think floor one. We had two blizzards come through. So, yeah, Mother Nature. We can stack that stuff all day long. They do it day after day, but Mother Nature. Yeah, so you're just having to fight the elements when yep. you're trying to do your work and it makes it a little tougher. Yep. What else? What is, what? I mean, what, what are, you know, what makes it, perfect and what's what holds you back from perfect other than the weather what uh you know what what are the tricks to the trade it's constantly changing uh whether or not new prints come in or whether or not we have the right product um something that uh you'd never know would happen it seems to always come up and it's just reacting to that so um the guys show up to work every day they work towards the end of day and then they get home safe um it's just reacting to that thing you don't know because we can do it repetitively without those troubles and um how many of these have you done <laughs> 19 story buildings or more well the this one is the structural concrete this is the tallest one i've been involved with for the concrete end of it uh structural steel uh been in 40 story um so it's different but the same it's better when you're going up, then to have a larger warehouse, because when you get up from the first floor, it's nice and smooth, and you get on a slab. When you're in a big warehouse, you're constantly fighting dirt piles, and it's just better to go tall, in yeah. my opinion. And uh, so this one is is the concrete. You mentioned st- structural steel is the other. What, what what you know? How do you? You're a concrete guy. You're a concrete supervisor, so I assume you like uh, concrete better. Why is it better? Well, this one is a structural concrete, so everything is. I- in the building is concrete. Uh, the larger areas up to level five, it's structural steel on a portion of it, and that's just in that econo- more economical way. Um, but the concrete itself is two two types. One is structural with just rebar holding it together, and the other one has rebar and post-tension cables, which is a an economical way to build also. 
um, in the f- from second to fifteen is PT, so post tension cables, and uh, they make for a, a shallower floor, so you can have uh, more headroom. Something I never thought of until uh, one of our sponsors uh, brought it to my attention was uh, the, the safety factor of concrete, and uh, and the and the strength of it. I mean, how it can stand up to winds and how it can stand up to fires and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, so many things I had never thought of before, but they, they make a good case about the fact that it's, uh, it is uh, as strong as it is. It, uh, you know, uh, National Wind Institute, Texas Tech, concrete, the best material, material to stand up to wind, winds as strong as tornadoes and hurricanes. You said Mother Nature lives here. I don't know if we're yep. going to have any hurricanes anytime soon, but you never know. No, and uh, I think concrete's a pretty cheap product, too, and it lasts a long time, so I have Concrete's the way to go. Safety and strength and, and yep. all those things, yeah. Yep. Um, so now, how long will you be part of this project? Till the end? Uh, my time is short because we just topped off. Uh, we'll continue to do the little infills and whatnot, but uh, I think my time is uh, just before Christmas. And then do you know where you're going next? I got an idea. Going to, uh, to the other part of Mother Nature, we're going to go close to Duluth. So, oh, are you? Yeah. Well, yeah. it's really nice there always. Yeah. You know, you'll get that chill <laughs> from that uh, big lake next door. Yeah, that should be fun. So, but it, w- when you go somewhere, you're building big like this. Is this? I mean, you're, you're doing signature projects like this. Yeah. Usually, I get involved with something complicated, whether it's round or tall or big. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing a little bit of that story, and congrats to your guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. I, I hope a bunch of them are around today for a little bite to eat and uh, take a victory lap. Got to do that once in a while, right? Without a doubt. Is it when, when you're in the business, you're in topping it off? Is that's that's that feels like a big lift? I that's the celebration. That's uh, no more looking at the new prints, and we just kind of close up what we got. So yeah. And you got a flag up there too. I understand. There, yep. Yeah, good. So everybody can see that <laughs> right in the very. That's kind of tradition too, isn't it? Yeah, that's uh, you can see it for miles. Yeah, I love it. Hey, thanks for the story. Appreciate it very much. Brent Williams is the